Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 FY22 earnings conference call of Rochelle Decor Limited, hosted by Asian Market Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Karan Batalia from Asian Market Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Steven. Good afternoon and welcome all to the Rusil Decor Q3 and 9 months FY22 earnings conference call hosted by Asian Market Securities Limited. From the management side, today we have with us Mr. Gurupesh Bhai Thakur, Chairman and Mirage. And, and Managing Director, uh, Mr. Kiyur Gajjar, CEO, and Mr. Vipul Bhaiwara, CFO. I now hand the conference to Mr. Krupesh Bhai for his opening remarks, post which we shall open the floor for question and answer. Over to you, Krupesh Bhai. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Wish you all very warm welcome to Russell Decor Limited funding conference call for the third quarter year 21-22. I would like to been uh, expressing my great gratitude to all of you for taking time to join us today. On the call with me, Mr. Vipul Vara, CF of the company, Kevur Gajar, CEO of the company, and Bridge IR, our investor relation team. Before we discuss the performance of the partner under the consideration, I would like to brief to take through the com our company. Russell Decker was incorporated in 1993, has been in industries over 29 years, currently the third generation involved in the business. The business is divided into three segments mainly, laminate, MDF and PVC. Among the, we are the largest, one of the largest manufacturer of decorative laminate and third largest manufacturer of MDF. Under the laminate, we are manufacturing single side decorative laminates, double side decorative laminate, and industrial laminate. We have a wide range of designs, color, and finishes. We have a three manufacturing uh, units in Gujarat. I am happy to inform you that our MDF plant in Andhra Pradesh opening better than our desired expectation. Our utilization of the plant has been growing month on month basis, and we have already reached about 80% utilization level. This, I believe, quite significant and gave us enough confidence. As you know, our uh, Chikmangalur plant was shut down for more than 54 days and uh, Vizek plant took a care of loss of production from Karnataka by this significant utilization level. During the Q3, we saw very limited de uh, decline in volume against the previous quarter because of our AP plant. I would like to share that we are taking steps to increase our realization and resulting better EBITDA margin. So we have grown significant year-on-year -year basis, but the classic sequence performance in spite of low volume could be achieved due to higher realization on during the quarter. Further, I would like to add that new facility brings strategic location advantage as it's set up in South India, which is the, one of the most prominent market uh, and near the, uh, near the port of South India. We are consumer product company and as a strategic, we are adopting various means of market. We also create the brand awareness through advertisement, marketing network, like dealer and distributor, branch offices, etc. Currently, the company is well 
poise or continuous with current momentum. Our immediate uh, mid-term goal is to achieve desired capacity utilization at AP plant and newly, uh, and newly upgraded Karnataka facility. I would like to request Mr. Q to share his initial thought with us. Thank you, Professor. Uh, I would like to welcome everyone present on this call and uh, thanks for your time. I would like to begin by saying that the company is in very interesting phase of growth and evolution with the new MDF plant at AP operating in better than desired manner and our confidence level is pretty high. The recent shutdown and the day bottlenecking at Karnataka plant would also add to it. The MDF market is well close to growth, grow at decent pace and we all are ready to make our strong present fact. Our strategy is to keep analyzing the over, market over the market evolution and keep achieving higher capacity utilization at our new MDF AP plant. We are working on our operational matrix and trying to improve it. I would like to request our CEO, Mr. Vipul Vora, to take care of this for us. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Gilvai. I shall first take you through third quarter numbers. The top line for Q3 FY22 stood at rupees 167 crore, registering a growth of over 80% YOY as new plant in AP contributed to higher volumes. Despite the 54 days plant shutdown at Chikmaglu during the quarter, the company recorded a flattish revenue performance on a sequential basis as our AP plant operated at optimum capacity and compensated for the loss in volumes. Realizations at the same time also trended upwards. The EBITDA stood at Rs. 18.96 crore in Q3 FY22, increase of 95.47% as against Rs. 9.70 crore in Q3 FY21. EBITDA margin stood at 11.37% against 10.48% in the same quarter last year. The interest was and depreciation were higher during Q3 FY22 as against Q3 FY21 on account of capex incurred on the AP plant. The net profit for Q3 FY22 is rupees 7.29 crore as compared to rupees 5.33 crore in Q3 FY21. Coming to the nine months performance, the top line growth was over 81% over nine month period of FY21. Our EBITDA grew 75.83% for the same period. The nine months of FY22 was impacted by the financials of Q1 FY22, but that is in the past. With every incremental utilization level from AP plant, the performance, performance has been getting better and is likely to improve further. At the same time, with upgradation of Karnataka facility and commencement of operations, we are confident of seeing better days ahead. I would now request the moderator to open the floor for question answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Karthik Nindirata from India Nivesh. Please go ahead. Congrats to the management for decent performance. My question is related to the MDS realization. Our realization for Q322 are around 25,600. That is 21.3% increase YOI. Whereas the realization of century and green panel have increased by 33% and 44% respectively. So, what's the reason behind this? Okay, uh, hi there. Uh, this is Kayur, and I would like to answer this question. Uh, number one, uh, uh, we gave total three price increase in the month of October and November. First price increase was in first October, on 1st October, around 6 to 8%, so average 7%. Second price increase on 9th October, that is again 6%, and third price increase on 13th November, that was around 
seven percent. So altogether, it was between 70, 17, 18 percent. Now we are going to help the effect of this price increase in coming quarter. This is number one reason. Number two reason I would like to say is that if you see our uh, Chikmangalur plant realization, it's doing pretty better. Uh, I would say we are almost like 28,500 uh, realization for CBM in Chikmangalur plant, at, from the Chikmangalur plant. Uh, because in AP plant, we have not yet started offering value added product. So that's one of the reason why our overall realization in this quarter is comparatively low. Okay, sir. Any numbers on the value added product? Uh, in Chikmangalur, we have crossed 55% value added product. And if I give you uh, like a December month figure, our realization of December on this specific December month is almost more than 30,000 rupees per CBM from Chikmangalur plant. Okay, so just a last question. What is the mix between retail, OEM and institution? Uh, yes, it's around uh, 60 to 65 percent is our retail segments and uh, 30 to 30, uh, 30 percent, 25 to 30 percent is uh, OEM segments. The balance is exports and yeah, I forgot to mention one more thing is that our OEM pricings are now at par with the retail pricings and that is affected from 13th November. So we are also having a good effect on, in this quarter as well. Previously, it okay, used to be at, at the discounted price. Okay, thank you. Good luck to the management. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Krishna S. from Vihar Advisors. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, so good evening and uh, thank you for the opportunity. And actually, I have been uh, very uh, tracking your company uh, for some time now, and I'm very happy that uh, you are walking on the path uh, which you had envisioned. So uh, congratulations to the management uh, for making it happen. And uh, the first question is with respect to uh, other income. So other income you have shown uh, 2.67. So I would like to know what is uh, the components of the other income. <laughs> and uh, sec yeah. Uh, yeah. See, other income is uh, because of the dollar being changed. Okay, it's a foreign fluctuation cost. Okay, so that is because of foreign currency fluctuation, right? Yeah, yeah. That is why the figure is, so it seems to be as compared to other quarter, little higher. Okay. And uh, secondly, on the raw material uh, cost, so raw material cost, are you seeing in the current, uh, like, you know, even in the quarter gone by as well as in uh, current date? So are you seeing any significant price increase, uh, I mean, increase in the raw material cost? So uh, raw material cost was increased in the last quarter very high and uh, now it is uh, uh, stable. So in near future I am not seeing any very uh, high increase in the raw material price. If it will be increased then we have to pass on the customer. So we do not have any choice. Okay. okay. Fine. And uh, ne next is that uh, this uh, AP plant, so now that you have achieved uh, probably like, you know, because Chikmangalur was closed, so you you, have, you, step, you got an opportunity to actually step up the production. So now with the higher production, like, you know, say 80% uh, occupancy of both of the plants is what you would be targeting or it would be higher or lower than that? Yeah, it's going to be the more or less 75 to 80% in the, from the both plants. From both plants and the demand scenario is it uh, is it uh, like it can take this kind of uh, like uh, turnover incre increase of the like it can take the volumes yeah definitely because there are two reasons number one reason is import is not at all there if i give you the data of vietnam and import it's only 1824 cbm in the in in this nine months which okay. is very low previously it used to be like uh, more than one lakh plus Number one. Number two, uh, uh, there is a huge demand for the MDF segments. And uh, if we see the CAGR is around 15 to 20 percent. Uh, we don't see any issues with the demand at present. Okay, okay. So probably that is happening because of the plywood substitution kind of thing as well as the real estate uh, market. Definitely. If I say Indian uh, real estate business, people are, I mean, if you see 50% of all the corporate buildings and offices, 
these are now you know they are using the furniture made with the mdsm particle board correct then now the second segment is coming up that is a value added product like high density fiber board with water resistance capacity now this segment is entering into the kitchen segment as well correct so demand is increasing day by day and lot of oem startups for furniture kitchen and all these customers are there if you see the you know company they produce bed they come company they produce kitchen so you know we 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 see a tremendous potential correct so actually uh, so that is very you are at a very interesting juncture as you rightly said that at this so you are poised at for excellent growth but now that comes to the next question which is like you know so for example if you start if you are you planning any further capex for on the mdf capacity front because it would make sense or if at all you are planning then when it would be because how much time does it take from say concept to concept to uh, action like you know because for example if you say probably think today then your uh, then you probably your plan would be up by say another 2 3 years so if you are planning to for that capex then you would have to start thinking today so is there any thought process on that See right right now we have uh, only one thing this is uh, AP plant being created. We would like to have it being stabilized and producing to the extent of our expectation. And thereafter, see every three four years we can think of new thing. But uh, right now there is nothing that uh, we we are deciding on this capex ID. And yes, I would like to add one more thing. that uh, you know we we are using a german technology uh, where it's sophisticated plant and we can always achieve over capacity like 110% 115% so with the current cagr and all i think uh, we'll be fine with that and uh, your uh, debt uh, with respect to the debt so you would like to uh, uh, you would like to go with the obligations like as and when it falls due you would like to pay or you would like to prepay or uh, something like that or because the interest rates are in a down, uh, like right now down so like what is your thoughts on see right now also we are paying very low interest as far as this capex uh, of uh, the new plant is concerned uh, you will be surprised to know that at the interest on on uh, the german loan is 0.85% per so question of repaying it right now uh, if it is a financial decision i will not be in a position to uh, i will not decide to repay i'll continue with it and i'll i'll repay from my uh, regular inflow cash inflow so i i don't think that there is any sense in giving it back as compared to the indian local interest of about 8% right now yeah. so uh, next question is that uh, see uh, basically uh, you are into two major segments one is the mdf so which is excellent you are doing excellent in that so next is your uh, the laminate part so mm-hmm. why is it that we are uh, not uh, focusing for uh, say capacity uh, addition in or or you know boosting the sales in uh, laminates part is there any strategic reason for that or uh, like you know or we would like to go and grow that segment also and also for the pvc no at present to be honest entire focus is because of this covid two years so our entire focus was on ap plant we wanted to put this plant on run with our you know expected capacity so that's one of the reason why you know we have not given a thought on laminate business however certain internal discussions are going on but on time we will discuss okay fine good so that's all from my side so thank you uh, once again congrats hearty congratulations for putting every putting the plan on track and uh, good luck for the future thank you very much really appreciate it thank you the next question is from the line of rajesh ravi from hdfc securities please go ahead yeah hi sir good evening and congratulations on the ramp ups uh, and strong numbers uh, what i want to understand is on the mdf side uh, do you see any uh, competition built up happening in from you know when the container situation improves globally and uh, influx from china would that be a threat uh, you know in terms of realization and profitability for domestic players to be uh, to be honest we really don't see the freight movement will come down in coming year Coming, oh. coming months because 
this is number one number two mm -hmm. you know they can go for four five containers but you know if you want to import mdf you need substantial inventory like mm -hmm. 100 containers 200 containers and it's very mm -hmm. difficult to get now okay so we don't see that part in near future i believe mm -hmm. that's my personal assumption and mm -hmm. uh, second thing china is not ever a, a, not a threat for us because of their uh, freight cost mm -hmm. previously also before covid also okay Okay, and we so have some other competitors located in uh, Southeast Asia, but if we see uh, furniture market in general, there, mm -hmm. uh, Vietnam for example, there is a tremendous local demand for exporting mm -hmm. the MDF uh, and uh, furniture to US market. Okay. And okay. Some of the interest there, where they don't really want to sell their marginal production to India or uh, Gulf countries. Okay. Okay. And great. So, and second question, uh, you know, could you share uh, any sense on the segmental margins? Uh, how are your MBF EBITDA margins? You know, your realization is improving. Your utilization is also picking up. So, could you give some sense on EBITDA margin for the three segments or See, MDF realizations have increased. If you look at the comparison right. from quarter on quarter, right now realizations are higher. And yet, yet we look at the further uh, incremental realizations, the way in which the mixes are being changed. Mm -hmm. So it's about to be uh, appreciated. And okay. habitat level as such in MDF it has increased. And mm -hmm. in the time to come, as compared to the two plants combination, Chikmaglu mm -hmm. and Andhapi, right. because of the value added product, that also will increase the EBITDA. Mm -hmm. So this 11.5% uh, EBITDA margin on total basis, uh, how would the uh, you know, margins uh, would be across the laminates and the end? is a combo. Combo, right, right. That's what I'm right. saying. The so question is what I'm, what I'm trying to... Uh, analyzing, if you look at my cheek muggle plant, I have a 40-45 percent of the uh, plain board and then the prelim board selling, Correct. whereby the contribution is high, realization is high. So the same way we will apply same uh, philosophy at AP also when value added products have been sold, literally EBITDA will go up. Correct. And uh, one more one more thing I would like to add is the Chikmaguru plant was closed for almost 54 years. Yes. And that's one of the reasons why if you see our combination of EBITDA margin is not very uh, perfect. But if you see individual plant wise, if you see only AP EBITDA, then it is pretty good. And I think it's around 22%. Yeah. Okay, so MDF on a normalized basis, we can see a 22% EBITDA margin. This quarter, I understand, would be impacted because of the shutdown and all. Exactly. But, okay, and for the laminates, sir, what would be the EBITDA margin uh, on a normal steady margin that you are looking at? Maybe last three, four quarter average? Uh, right now, it is about 5%. Okay. Uh, because of the situation is that uh, the last quarter... RMC raw material prices have gone up. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So but uh, pre-COVID, what were the margins? Five percent is also very high. Uh, okay. I, also, I would like to tell you that uh, you know uh, we are talking about the current, uh, I mean uh, Q3 uh, EBITDA and all this thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Specifically, Q3 is uh, you know quarter where we have a lot of festive seasons. Okay. Uh, no, uh, so our sales in laminate is comparatively low in this region. In this okay. Region. In this Especially quarter, okay. November, November is always I like this. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why you know laminate. And if we see laminate industry in general, I uh, I believe the CAGR is almost 13 to 14 percent for coming five years. So we see a lot of opportunities in laminate business in coming years. Okay. Uh, if we see about, if we talk about the realization of our export business, because you know, because of this domestic uh, festive season, uh, this EBITDA margin is affected probably. But if we see mm -hmm. our export realization, it is almost grown by 10% in this quarter. 
ओके नो नो आई जस्ट वांटेड टू अंडरस्टैंड लाइक ऑन अ स्टडी बेसिस वे लीव दिस क्वार्टरली इंपैक्ट व्हाट कुड बी द मार्जिन्स फॉर द लैमिनेट बिजनेस फॉर यू एंड द एमडीएफ यू सेड वुड बी 22 और परसेंट सो सिमिलरली फॉर द लैमिनेट व्हाट सॉर्ट ऑफ एबिटा मार्जिन वन शुड अंडरस्टैंड इन इन नॉर्मल सर्कमस्टेंसेस लैमिनेट बिजनेस पर से इफ यू लुक एट द इंडस्ट्री एबिटा इज इन एन अराउंड 10% okay okay in a normal scenario 10% is uh, doable yeah okay so, so yes, that's sir. A, that's a, if you look at all, all the peers also this will okay. be laminate particularly uh, it's a it's a low profitability item mm mm-hmm. mm okay uh, so like that is a ebit margin you are talking about sir or ebitda margin because ebit margin you are right uh, laminates you have been reporting 11 10 to 12% ebit margin प्लांट इन दिस क्वार्टर Pardon? Uh, sir, sales volume number from the Vizag plant in this quarter. See, we have uh, produced around forty thousand plus CBM, mm-hmm. and uh, if we combine combine the exports and uh, domestic sales, it's around thirty-seven thousand sales. I'm talking about sales value, sales volume, and production mm-hmm. is around forty thousand plus. Oh, that that that's lovely, sir. Uh, my sir, my next question is uh, on um, you know. This is only from, this is only from my, uh, our AP plant, huh? Correct, correct, correct. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, my next question is on our um, higher value products in the AP plant. So you know, uh, I think couple of quarters back you had mentioned that we were facing issues with engineers coming from Germany. So what are we doing about that, and how how do we see you know churning out more higher value products from the AP plant? See that that is a now historical thing. It has uh, happened in the past. Mm-hmm. Thereafter, they have operated these machines sitting there in Germany. So mm-hmm. there, there is no no question that now the engineers have to visit or something like that. That announcement was required to be done statutorily. We had done it, mm-hmm. and now everything is see plant is running at this capacity. Uh, Mr. Ayush, yeah, Mr. Ayush, uh, producing uh, value-added product will not be a problem as long as this uh, plant and uh, its uh, technical part is concerned. We are fully equipped with the machinery for like delaminations and all these grades. Now there are some other uh, value-added product like exterior grade, high-density fiber board with water resistance capacity. It's just matter of uh, technology. That's all. And we we are already currently producing at our Chikmagalur plant, so that's not a problem for us. So, and we were actually focusing. We were focusing on achieving the capacities and efficiency of the plant, and that's one of the reason why we were producing this interior grade. And now we are ready to launch. All of our other products. Right. So beginning Q4, we can expect a share of higher value products to increase. Ah uh, yes, we are. We have already launched. So slowly, gradually, we'll uh, gear up in Q4. Right. Ah uh, right. Uh, understood. And so my final question is on on the laminates part. Uh, we used to do more. Repeat, repeat, please. Can you repeat, sir? Uh, my last question is on the laminate side uh, looking at the presentation we used to do more than uh, in uh, you report in numerical figures so we used to do more than 8 lakh numbers of laminates uh, previously but that has gone down below 1 lakh so uh, can you explain like are we are we facing some headwind or are are we are we doing something else that is why we are not able to produce or sell so much of laminates that we used to earlier No, that's not only the reason. As I said in my earlier answer, the reason is mainly festive season in the month of October and November. Mm-hmm. That's one of the reason why we were not able to. Otherwise, if you see our last uh, 
quarter we were almost like 742000 chips so right. I, uh, so that's only because purely because of this uh, plastic decisions and all this reasons all right and and then one last question if you can uh, squeeze in yes. is uh, uh, I, um, mr agarwal uh, sorry to interrupt your voice is breaking up sir is this better you will have to repeat this question can yes. i please yeah yeah sir is this better? is my is my voice better now am i audible very much yeah thank you um, so my sir last question is that uh, you had mentioned that you know the chikmangalur uh, mdf realization is well above 28000 which is uh, very healthy uh, so do we do we plan to you know do 24 25000 in ap as well in q4 Yeah, that's possible. I mean, it's not a problem. All right, all right. Uh, that's it from us, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the lineup, Pranav Gala from iWealth Management. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Hello. Yes. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, great set of numbers. Uh, sir, just wanted to un uh, understand on our EBITDA margin side of it, sir. Uh, so for other companies, we have seen that the beta margin for the current quarter had grown. So just wanted to understand where we missed out on. See, if we compare with the other companies for now, uh, their realization, our realization is different. Um, what what we have done is, uh, Chikmagur plant was closed for 54 days. There was no there, there was no 54 days production and AP as we we are just initiated the process there of producing yet the value addition things have not come up there. See if you look at the PR sale major uh, these uh, value added products are more in, in the sale component. The moment we also will have value added products automatically our EBITDA also will go up. Okay, okay. Um, but sir, even then we had a healthy realization growth. So, uh, like on a, on volume terms, quarter on quarter, we saw 13% decline. But uh, on the same on the realization side, saw 14% increase. So, mm. again, sir, we, we saw healthy realization growth and still there was a little gap when it comes to the beta margin side of it, sir. Yeah, because you said now there was a minus EBITDA margin in Chik Chikmangalur. And uh, if you see, uh, if, if you see our uh, production loss, it's almost like 50 to 4 days, so we can say consider around 2 months. So there was a more than 30, I guess, crore uh, revenue loss if we, uh, if we compare with our existing uh, realization. Um, sorry, sir, could you repeat how, what was the loss of revenue? Uh, I would say if we consider current rate of realization, then we believe that it is more than 30 crore. 3 zero, 30 crore. Yes, 30 crore. Okay, sir. Uh, and okay. that's one of the reasons why, you know, our EBITDA, EBITDA affected in uh, from Sikmangu business. Otherwise, if you see a uh, AP plant, it's pretty big. Good. And we expect a lot. Right, sir. Yeah, like you mentioned in your presentation as well, sir. We have reached the 80% uh, utilization. Sir, exactly. uh, so just one bookkeeping question. Uh, sir, what was the sales that we had uh, in the new plant? Uh, as you mentioned, 37,000 crore was the sale volume. Uh, 37,000 was the sales volume. And what was the sales in terms of value? Value wise, uh, 137 crore. One one crore thirteen lakh. Sorry, sir. One thirteen lakh. One hundred thirteen crore. One 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 three crore. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Brown. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Agarwal from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to check. Uh, you know, again in December month, what is the realization from the AP plant? I think you gave it for the other plant about 30,000. So what is the same thing over the AP plant? 
see, uh, good evening, Mr. Yash. And uh, if I talk about uh, uh, overall AP plant realization, it was 22,818 rupees. Okay. And uh, out of which uh, domestic realization was 23,174 and export was 19714. And this would move up, right? Because you've taken three prices. It's already moved 15% compared to last uh, quarter. And as I said before, that uh, we implemented uh, price increase in the month of October and November. So I believe it's going to be, and then we are also planning for uh, product mix, like value added products and all. So this could move up another 5 10%, right? The realization number that you spoke about? Maybe. Yeah. Also, I just wanted to check, so what sort of capacity utilization on, for both the plants are you looking at in FY23? I think you're running at 80% now. So if the demand stays good and, you know, uh, if there is no import risk, could we achieve the 100% utilization mark in FY23? What's your target? See, practically, 100% uh, is not possible. I tell you, the technical part is like, you know, if we produce 2 mm MDF, our plant runs at 500 CPM per day. And if we produce 16 or 17 mm, the commodity type of product, then our plant runs at 800 CPM. However, we are, we, we are targeting that we'll try for 75% uh, of the combinations. That's the next financial year? Yeah. Got it, got it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is from the line of Agastya Dawri from CAO Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yeah, very yeah. much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir, and a very good commentary. It's uh, really nice to hear all the progress that you're making. Uh, sir, I need just some few clarification on the statements that you're given. Uh, one is, uh, sir, I am not sure. Can we see... Uh, let's say 50% value added share in the AP plant. Uh, did you give any timeline? Because I lost you in between. Hi. Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, we, we, we are starting this uh, part very aggressively. Till date, our value added products were widely spread in southern region. Right. Now, now we are, uh, you know, moving ahead with other regions like Central India, North India, East India, and all this part. Right. And possibly by next financial year, we'll be able to achieve this mix because we are more interested for value addition products, and I believe any company. Right. So Listen. that's one of our target to reach 50%. Uh, uh, value added product as early as possible. And Indian market is growing also at that speed. So. so, so what can we see in terms of uh, the trend in increase of value added share from the AV plant? Uh, will it be like very very quickly? Because as you said, you have the machinery in place now. You already are doing uh, the same thing in the old plant. You clearly have the capability, and there is clearly a demand. So, can we expect like in one itself, will we see 30, 40 percent share, or will it be more gradual? Uh, I'm not very sure about that. I, that actually, about? actually, we are working on our target setting process for Q1. So it's very difficult to say at this point of time. But yeah, we want to achieve maximum uh, capacity for the value of the product. Sure, sir. The second Thank clarification you. was on the on the debt side, you uh, gave an interest cost number for the uh, foreign debt. Can you please repeat that? And second, uh, on this foreign, foreign debt, uh, do you hedge it in any way? Uh, uh, any portion of it is it hedged or you keep it completely open and uh, do we expect our exports to kind of give us uh, natural hedge if my export I'm carrying is it yeah, yeah see right now also we have ports of about uh, 130 crore up this year okay I am talking about INR I'm not talking in terms of dollar see right Every month there is a surplus, uh, surplus care, uh, dollar flow, sure. which is ranging from six lakhs to eight lakhs dollars. Okay. And my repayment is not exceeding even a million dollars. Okay. Okay. So the thing is that if a quarter, if I'm in 1.8 million dollars surplus. Mm -hmm. Export receivable minus import. Got it, sir. 
that will be 6 lakhs minimum per month. Right. So natural hedge is there. Right. As natural hedge is there, there is, there is no no uh, hedging being done on this forex uh, borrowing. Uh, sir, you said one million dollar repayment is on a quarterly basis. Yeah. No, no. One million dollar even if it, it is payable. Quarterly basis, uh, I, I will have to pay at least uh, uh, more than that amount. But the thing is that no, my, my repayment total is being covered by my export receivable surplus. Acha, acha. Okay, I got it. Sir. I got it. You have like enough a natural hedge for it not to be a risk. So final yeah. question. Uh, you, you, you mentioned in the call that uh, your domestic realization and your uh, average realization from AP plant were 23,000 plus in domestic. Yeah. Average was 22,818. Uh, okay. And then you mentioned that there is a 15% increase. So uh, as of now, as of today, uh, yeah. what would be the price that you are getting in the market? Uh, is it is uh, and what kind of discounts do you have with respect to other players? Can we catch up to that? And finally, do you see any further price increases in MDF going forward? Because you also mentioned that while freight is a problem, logistics is a problem, and imports are not coming, but raw material uh, escalation has kind of stabilized. So, uh, what is your view there? So that is my last question. Uh, yeah, for raw material, you know, if any there is a price increase from raw material side. Mm -hmm. As Mr. Kruger said, we might have to pass on to the market. Okay. Number one. Number two, as long as realization is concerned, realizations are pretty good and we don't see any downward see. I mean, as on that, it's pretty good. Right. And for OEM also, we are doing pretty, I mean, from 1st, uh, 13th uh, November onwards, mm -hmm. we have that price as per the retail market only. Okay. Uh, 13th November onwards. So, sir, uh, based on the average that we realized last quarter, uh, this quarter, what time already? How 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 much higher we are? Well, it's very difficult to say at this point of time, but we believe that uh, you know the f uh, first price increase took place in October and second in November. So, yes. total price increase effects has not taken place so far. Number one. Okay. And number two, uh, Chikmango plant was not operational in that three months. 54 days it was shut down. Right, sir. So, so it's very difficult to predict, but realization has to be higher, I believe. Excellent, sir. Uh, all the best, sir. Thank you very much for holding the call and giving me the opportunity to ask you questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vijay Sarada from VL Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Um, most of my question has been answered. I just wanted to check on two fronts. Uh, one, um, regarding the MDF capacity, you said uh, we can go up to 110-150% if needed. And second, I just wanted to understand um, if you want to produce a product uh, of kind of Andhra plant, Chikmangalu plant, how much time we will need to get into this um, mode of producing? So our plant we already increased the capacity. So can we change the mix uh, after it is required? Yeah, that's easily possible. We can easily change this shift. And if we look at it, our free lamination business, we have almost uh, like, uh, I would say, around 25% uh, capacity of our existing plant. So we can convert okay. this 25% uh, free lam business immediately. And for exterior grade and HDF is not a problem. That we can... Oh, and, and sir, basically, uh, yeah. one thing is uh, currently in terms of market positioning, if I look at competitor in ourselves, um, they are realizing 30,000 plus and all that. Whereas for Chikmangalur, definitely, as you said, we are realizing 28. So for Andhra to ramp up to at least 25, 27,000, that's a um, clear possibility, as you mentioned. So yeah, when can we... Uh, sorry, but I would like to make it very simple because you know that time uh, at present, if we uh, look at it, AP plant, we are only producing interior grade only, basic okay. product. Okay. And that's the only reason why our realization is pretty like uh, around 24, 20,000, 24,000 or something like that. So the last question in terms of the cost of production, 
so uh, what i read uh, is the cost of production overseas is at least 30 to 40 30 35% less uh, compared to indian cost so how um, basically uh, as you rightly said uh, the freight cost currently are much higher but once this get normalized over next 6 to 9 months or a year or so how uh, we will be in terms of positioning ourselves because if i look at the cost of most of the player these are around 18 to 20000 for indian player Uh, whereas what we are exporting is a twenty thousand realization. Even for the century, the realization is around twenty, uh, so twenty twenty one thousand billion per annum. So if we look at export, if we are able to export at twenty, uh, once the freight cost decrease or whatever, uh, will we see dumping of uh, the MDF in the domestic market? And even if uh, it were happening earlier, what is the price normalized price? Not at the increase price they were importing the MDF. Look, if we talk about the total uh, furniture market worldwide, uh, it's around uh, furniture market. I'm talking. It's around 100 billion. Okay. And out of which uh, China contributes a lot, and then probably Vietnam and Germany. Vietnam and Germany. Okay. Now, uh, yeah. Now there is a huge demand for uh, furniture from Vietnam business, from Vietnam producers. Okay. from this around the globe i believe and okay. that's one of the reason why there is a lot of demand of mdf in vietnam itself okay then there are a lot of demand itself in thailand and other part of the world so we we believe that dumping will not be uh, uh, very much in coming months even if there is a trade changes and it's very i mean it's not at all predictable what will be the freight after 6 months or 1 year you know yeah that is the one yeah years. everyone gets yeah yes we, we have more than in 2 years we have one wave second wave third wave hope there won't be any fourth wave but still the freight are you know going higher and higher the container what we used to pay 2500 dollars for 40 feet high cube now today they are asking 12000 dollars 5x okay 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 Thank you. So just 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 want to understand uh, what is the normalized cost of production there in ours. So basically, uh, uh, ours is around. So is the wood cheaper there, or uh, what is uh, the overall benefit that they have over India cost of production? Because machinery, so they might be using the same. Two, two years before uh, cost of production and everything, then uh, the trade cost is normal. Even though mm-hmm. all the company is making twenty percent plus EBITDA. EBITDA, correct. Okay. Okay. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devang Patel from NAFA AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. On the plant maintenance that we enter to uh, for the Karnataka plant, uh, will it have any benefit in in terms of capacity utilization or efficiency gains or cost cuts? Yeah. Uh, uh, hi there. Uh, yes, we believe the efficiency will definitely improve because you know this was a preventive as well as routine maintenance which was needed, and we believe it will improve our efficiency. So, what kind of utilization have we reached on this plant in the past, and what is it that we can reach now after the maintenance? Actually, every 10 year to 12 year we have to do this type of maintenance and. Uh, Uh, it will be uh, improve the production utilization uh, so uh, before that we are utilizing at 75% and we can utilize now at 95% 85% like that okay fine sir that's all from my side thank you The next question is from the line of Ajay Surya from Miraki Investment. Please go ahead. Congratulations for our decent set of numbers. As I'm listening, as I was listening to Green Panel's con call, they mentioned the MDF realization difference is only three four percent between them and Russian. But if we look at our our realization, the difference is somewhat around thirteen percent. So I wanted to know what is the reason for the same. uh let me tell you something uh, because it, maybe they may be referring about the price gap yeah 
And as I said earlier, that uh, we give the three price revision: one in October, another first, another one on 9th October, third one on 13th November. Okay. So, we, so we anticipate this uh, price increase effect somewhere in this quarter. Number one. Number two, uh, because our value addition mix and green value addition mix is different, and that's one of the reason why you see the difference. Okay. As I said, that now we are targeting very seriously on pre-value uh, on a uh, value-added product. I think you must have heard whatever I said in uh, previous. Yeah, yeah. So we are taking it to the new new level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and other question is, so sir, as we can see, the supply chain disruptions are easing off right now. So, what are the import threats of MDF we can face in the coming future? Sorry, what are the import threats? Import threats we can face from in the coming future of MDF. To be honest, I don't know about the future, but today I can say that uh, Vietnam is offering uh, 20 feet of container around 2,000 plus and uh, 40 feet of 3,000 plus. So, you know, per CBM cost is coming around 100 CBM, $100 per CBM. And, and if we consider the selling price, it's around $250. Okay. So... Okay. It's not actually viable to import, I mean, and a lot of importers, they have shifted to local suppliers because now, you know, supply from local business is also very easy. Now, previously, you know, in uh, if you look at it current position, I think more than uh, 1.5 million capacities in the north region. Okay. And if we consider the southern region, we are around 7 to 8 lakh per year. Okay, okay. So, you know, we are easily able to cater this market and we have a very good, uh, you know, logistic advantage. Maybe we can save 10, 15 percent if you want to bring MDA from north and if you want to buy MDA from south, you can save around 10, 15 percent logistic cost. Okay. Got it, sir. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vijay Sarda from VL Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, my last question regarding uh, when we need to look out for the capacity expansion. Uh, as you said, we are already operating at 80% capacity in uh, Andhra plant. You said we can easily ramp up to 110, 115. So given the demand outlook of 15 to 20 percent kind of growth, next two years down the line, we may need the capacity. And as you said, if we need to set up the plant, we need to plan in advance. At least it will take at least 18 to 24 months. So what is the scenario? Uh, so when we need to actually revisit uh, the expansion plan, and uh, if we know now, then looking at expansion plan, do we need to raise some money uh, at that point of time? Actually, till today we are uh, uh, behind the utilization capacity of AP plant and modification of uh, uh, Chikmangalur plant. So now we are uh, 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 utilizing the capacity and ex getting the expected result. So we will discuss and internal and will inform once it finalize. Okay, sir. Okay, fine. Fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karan Batalia from Asian Market Securities. Please go ahead. Nice. Thank you for the opportunity and congrats for a good set of numbers. Uh, so I just wanted to you know, understand the realization gap uh, between the value added products you know, uh, that we manufacture as uh, a chick and glue and the plain vanilla interior gate products. Thanks, sir. Uh... Uh, if we talk about pre-laminated MDF, average uh, realization is between 35,000 to 40,000. Uh, if we talk about exterior grade, the average realization is 30 to 35 percent more. If we consider HDF, WR, that is water resistance high density product, then the average realization is 50 to 60 percent more than the interior grade. Right, right, right. And, and now that we are looking to you know, introduce the value-added portfolio at the Adram plant, you know, have we spent incremental keep it there or, or, or how does it happen? Uh, because it's almost one year that the plant has got operational. 
and as we are as as the year we, we were focusing more on our efficiency and capacity achievement so you know the best option is to produce the interior grade and right now we will enter into because as i said we have almost 25% of our existing capacity for the prelim um, machinery is there so we can easily achieve 25% of our existing capacity for the prelim mm -hmm. grade this is for mm -hmm. the second thing for lcs and for the exterior grade you really don't need any uh, specific rocket science it's just matter of uh, recipe so there is no changes required for machinery or anything got it and one more thing on the competition part you know for next two years we we see a clear case of 60% increase in the industry level capacity so so what is your trend in terms of competitive intensity you know post fy25 no we really see that this industry is growing between 15 to 20% number one number two uh, everyone has a different advantage and usp we are in southern region we have our own usp and advantages so we we really don't see this capacity will be a, addition of capacity will be a problem today if we see it's around 2.3 million capacity i believe and exactly. if we see the demand is between 1.7 to 1.9 million so and if you look at all the organized player their capacity is almost more than 90% right so the problem is with the unorganized player and their capacity utilization got but that and that second, was second, for the bank next second day. thing second thing mm -hmm. uh, you know this uh, introduction of the product is already on the finish uh, stage if we talk about the product life cycle now it is reaching to some kind of a growth and maturity part right so in this situations customers will be more of a quality conscious and right. when you have a perfect you know combination to produce the best quality of material i am sure that you will have your own market share got it got it thank you uh, thank you for the detailed answer Thank you, sir. I'll follow up in the queue. So, Karan, any questions? No, no. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, we take that as the last question. I now end the conference. Over to Mr. Karan Patelia for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Rasheed, do you have any closing comments you want to make? Just a minute. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you and the entire team of Rasheed Dekor for untiring efforts, hard work, sincerity, and high dedication. I also appreciate all of you for participating in this conference conference call to get uh, if you have any questions please in touch with our investor relation team thank you very much thank you ladies and gentlemen on behalf of asian market securities that concludes this conference we thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines